Feed represents one of the highest costs when producing a litre of milk. So where can producers hope to reduce this cost? One option may be to reduce the level of feed waste, which can be as high as 25% on some dairy farms. In this short film, we will be looking at how feed waste can be reduced at the different stages of the feeding process, be it the silage clamp, the concentrate store, or during the mixing and feeding. Silages are an important feedstock for dairy farms, but there can be significant wastage associated with the feed. One of the important aspects of ensiling a crop is the exclusion of air. Of course, once a clamp is open and the silage is being fed out, the clamp face is constantly exposed to air, leading to potential spoilage. But a lot can be done to reduce the extent to which spoilage occurs. Silage should be cut from the clamp face as opposed to using a loading shovel or open tined grab. This cutting action helps to maintain silage density at the clamp face and reduce air infiltration. It is also good practice to keep the clamp face as even as possible to reduce the surface area exposed to air. This clamp is nice and level with the silage cut cleanly from the face. The speed at which you move through the clamp is also important. Ideally you should aim to move back at a rate of 1.5 metres per week and twice this during the summer. Where whole crop is being fed, such as maize or wheat, it is good practice to cover the clamp face once the forage required has been removed. This helps reduce birds feeding on the valuable grain in the forage. For more information on reducing losses due to birds, you can visit the AHDB Technical Information website. Another area where wastage can be minimised is in the storing and feeding of concentrates. Here, the aim is to keep the feed fresh, free of contaminants, pests and livestock. When designing or constructing a feed store, it is important to remember that it should have a smooth, damp-proof floor to reduce losses during both the storage and loading while the roof should be designed in such a way as to prevent condensation forming and potentially reducing the lifespan of your feed. Vertical silos should be checked regularly for holes or cracks through which moisture can enter. Damp feed can cause expensive, time-wasting problems by blocking delivery lines and other equipment. Stores should be cleaned at regular intervals to reduce the risk of insect and fungal buildup. For more information on this, farmers can consult the booklet on the safe storage of cereals while advice on how to stay safe while cleaning stores can be found on the Health and Safety Executive website. Where separate mineral, vitamin or other supplements are being used, the bag should be stored off the ground, ideally on a pallet and under a cover to prevent moisture damage. Feed stores should be closed immediately after use to reduce losses due to birds and rodents. The objective of feed mixing is to ensure that sufficient nutrients are supplied to the animal Ideally, each mouthful should contain the same feed ingredients as the next if mixed correctly. To achieve this and minimise waste, a few simple steps should be followed. Ensure weigh cells and scales are calibrated. Please refer to your specific manufacturer's guidelines on how to do this. Know the size of the group and what they are being fed. Milk and cows should be offered 105% of their requirement, while any changes to group size or rationing should be communicated to those responsible for feeding. Know the dry matter of your forages. Ideally, forage dry matter should be determined weekly and inclusion rates adjusted accordingly. Follow the machine manufacturer's guidelines for achieving the correct chop length and particle distribution. Where minerals are being offered, these should be weighed using scales capable of measuring to the nearest gram. A dedicated standard operating procedure should be drawn up for the farm to ensure that correct mixing and feeding is achieved. Feed should be offered on a fresh and often basis. Remember the additional 5% above requirement needed for milking cows. Regular feed push-up will improve dry matter intake and reduce waste. Surplus feed should be removed on a daily basis. This can be offered to younger stock or dry cows if the feed is still fresh and appropriate for their nutritional requirements. Correct grouping of livestock such as running a heifer group and having the correct space allocation will optimise animal performance and improve feed conversion into milk or weight gain. For more information on this please consult the housing booklet. By following and thinking through the process of clamp and feeding management, areas where there is potential for minimising wastage can be identified. Addressing these areas, no matter how small the action, allows you to reduce the waste and in turn the costs associated with the feed.